So hello guys and welcome to this new video. As you can see we're going to look at some settings in Battlefield 2042. As you probably have noticed the game is running really bad right now and I just wanted to show you some settings that might make your game run better and might make you aim better and like all the good stuff that you might want to change to perform better in game. So the first thing uh, when it comes to the general settings what you want to do is you want to turn off camera shake amount because that makes your camera or like your screen shake on explosions and you don't want to have that so turn it on uh, turn it down as much as you can. Um, when it comes to crossplay it's really up to you. Uh, I use it on on so I can find faster matches but at the moment it won't really matter to be honest so just choose what works best for you here. And then we're going to go to display settings. It's going to get more interesting here. Uh, these are my settings, but you want to use whatever your screen is capable of. So the best refresh rate and maybe not the best resolution right now since the game is performing really bad. So you might just want to use full HD and that's it for now. Uh, for field of view, I like 105 the best, but you can choose whatever you like. I heard from a lot of people that they use like something from 80 to 90 because that's apparently the best for uh, performance and like what you can see in game and how the how big the player models are and stuff. But for me, 105 works really good, so I'm using that. Um, ADS field of view, I use it on on because uh, when you zoom in, it just zooms in so much if you turn it off. So it makes you feel like you have recoil, but you actually don't. So for me it feels like I'm actually trying to control recoil when there is no recoil and also one big downside is your aim or your sense doesn't feel the same because your screen FOV changes and I don't like it. Also you can't see like your left and your right really good while being inside of your scope so that's also a big downside that's why I use it on on. If you turn it off I won't use it on off and that's just my recommendation. Get used to having it on on and you're gonna perform better. Uh, all these graphical like filters turn them off. They just co cost frames and they don't really do anything good for your game. For the graphic settings I usually wouldn't run everything on low but as of right now the game is like performing really bad so just turn everything to low and yeah use that for now. I tried to use like mesh quality on high or ultra, I don't remember, but uh, that, that was like a setting in Battlefield 5 that made you made you spot enemies way better, but right now that isn't really working that well, so yeah, just use everything on low. Dynamic resolution scale, if you have a really bad PC, turn it on, otherwise I wouldn't recommend it, your game will get really really blurry. Um, DLSS isn't working right now, um, I mean, if you uh, use quality or like ultra performance or whatever, your game will just get really blurry, but like it, it won't really work. Like you, you, you're not getting anything from it. And for ray tracing, I don't have to comment on that, I guess. It will make your game feel like, I don't know, arc on release day on a potato, so don't use it. Um, Nvidia Reflex, low latency, enabled plus boost for me. Uh, this makes your mouse feel way smoother and you will have like less input lag, so use it on enabled on boost, that's my recommendation here. Future frame rendering is like a thing that depends on your system and uh, on your luck I would say. Like for some people it makes the game feel stuttery or like more input laggy but like for me in Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 2042 it just gives me more frames and it works really well and I have heard that from a lot of people so I would use it on on or at least try to use it on on. Uh, V-Sync obviously off and high fidelity objects is also on low. When it comes to HUD, uh, this setting I already talked about, so just turn it down. Um, for your squad colors, you can change these. Um, for me, the custom setting wasn't available, so I'm just running the default ones right now, but I'm probably going to change them once we get more HUD settings, because I'm guessing that on day one patch we will get more settings here. Uh, kill lock on on. I was using this on all, but if I think about it now, I would just use it on nearby because with 128 players, it's kind of hard sometimes to keep track. If you use it on all, it's also not bad because you can see like if a sniper that killed you gets killed and then you can call it out to your teammates that you're safe to rest. But for now, I'm going to try out nearby, but that's like a personal reference thing. When it comes to the crosshair, um, I'm using these settings. Um, I 
would I would turn this off definitely like crosshair projection because this will make your crosshair not be in the middle and it's just bad just turn it off it's not not a good setting to have it on on for the crosshair color I'm recommending something really bright or like something that you can see on every single object in the game or like on every surface so like for example pink there isn't really a lot of pink stuff in the game so that's why I'm using pink so I can see my crosshair always for uh, these, uh, the hit color, like these won't make any difference for you to be honest, but I'm using like, for headshots I'm using red, for uh, kills I'm using purple, and I'm using these settings in general, that's just my uh, personal preference on this, because I really like to see if I headshotted somebody on range so I know he's low, or something like that. For minimap, these are my settings, uh, I like to see a lot ahead, like for, on a map for example like Hourglass, you if you see people on the minimap shooting like behind the dune and you know that they're there if you turn this down you won't see them anymore because you don't see like as far so i'm using the setting on like 162 but it it's like up to you for vehicles i would turn this up if i'm using vehicles because you can see way more than and it's really good especially for like air vehicles so you see even more stuff on your minimap uh, when it comes to sound i'm using these settings um there's not really m anything that, especially uh, except from in-world radio music, I turned this off because, like on Breakaway, there was some radios I didn't like to hear them in the background, so I can hear like steps and stuff better than music. So I turned this off. Now it now we're coming to mouse and keyboard. Uh, raw input obviously on and this on off. Then we're going to on foot. Uh, some of these settings we talked about already, like ADS FOV. Um, this is just my sense. I'm using 400 dpi, 22 in game, so that's my setting here. Um, FOV, we talked about that already. Um, sprint to vault over and always use uh, traversal sprint both and off because this setting will just make you vault all the time on random objects, so I don't really like it, so turn it off um, because you will vault all over the place <laughs> otherwise. So uh, for this setting, it's up to you, it's how you feel the most comfortable. Um, parachute auto deploy I turned it off and air spawn parachute auto deploy I turned it off as well now I use this on on in beta but right now I turned it off just to try it out because in the beta you were like playing a lot of orbital so you were jumping down from the big building but right now that's not the case anymore a lot of the times you're just like spawning on the ground anyways and if you spawn in air you can just press space anyway so that's why I'm using the setting um, quick throw grenades I use it on on I can recommend it because you will only need to click your nade button once and not click left mouse button as well because if you turn it off like you have to get your nade out first and then throw it afterwards so I don't really like this so you should turn that on so you can insta throw your nade um, for these settings um, the coefficient um, a lot of people talk about it um, there's like one setting where you turn this to zero or you turn it to 133 um, I use it on 133, uh, it just works for me and you just get need to get used to this but there's like a couple of settings that are recommended here like 0 or this setting or like 170 or something like that. For vehicles I didn't really change anything in here since I didn't really get to play vehicles yet but yeah I'm probably gonna get here at one point. This are just, these are just my settings that I'm using right now. Uh, we talked about this already. For key bindings I left most like on default anyways yeah I changed some stuff like when it comes to crouching I'm just used to these controls if you need them you can pause the video and check them out there's not really anything that I wanted to like highlight in here I guess um, but there is one more important thing in the settings still uh, when you go to your controller settings this is uh, really important even if you're playing mouse and keyboard because there's like a bug right now for some people that you get your controller input um, like you get controller input even though you're playing with mouse so what I recommend doing and what people found out if you use the exact same settings than in mouse and keyboard it will make you f um, your game feel better you will feel more um, like you will feel better with these settings because if they are the same you won't feel any difference like sometimes it will just use your controller settings even though you're playing mouse and keyboard so you won't really feel consistent if you have like different settings so that's why I made my settings in here the same and what you al 
also want to do you want to turn off aim assist in here both of these you want to turn them off and then there is one more setting aiming left right acceleration you want to turn that down as well because that will make your game feel weird as well if you have it on and if you have the bug so uh, make sure to do that so I guess we're done with the game settings now, like everything you can do in game is done now, but I'm going to show you some stuff that you can do out of game in some files as well. So quick cut right here. So now we're on your de on our desktop right now. And as you can see, I went to my file explorer and now we're going to head to our documents folder. And then you want to go into the Belfield 2042 folder in settings. And then you're going to open prof safe uh, profile. Um, then you can see like a lot of different lines and you probably won't understand everything but that's not required anyways you just want to scroll down until you get to GST render and that's about right now and you can see all these graphic settings right now and if you're gonna look through them you can see like some settings that you can enable in game actually and you can change like your color numbers here and stuff so your color on the crosshair and like SWAT members and stuff will change but there is some important stuff or like some stuff that you can change in here that will make your game feel a lot better. Like I'm talking 20 to 30 FPS depending on your setup as well. So you want to go to DX12 enabled. This is usually set to zero, like default it's set to zero. You want to uh, use a one in here. So this will turn on DX12 and this should give you like 20 to 30 frames more depending on your graphics card. Uh, it gave me like a 20 to 30 fps boost at least on some maps even more so you want to turn this on in battlefield 5 this costs some problems for some people so you want to try it out like if it causes trouble for you you can always turn it off again but you should definitely try this out for sure then if you scroll down a little bit you will see like a lot of stuff that is in your settings again like film grain and all the other effects for example but what you want to do if you scroll down there's like weapon depth of field for example you want to set that to zero for sure because all it does it just makes your gun blurry when you uh, scope in and that can cause like input lag or like a weird feeling while zooming in with your gun so i would always use it on zero anyways um then for some other stuff in here there is like shadow quality i would turn that off as well like to zero because it just causes frame drops as well. What you can do as well is put share quality to zero. I didn't do that because my game looked really terrible with it, but I, I'm actually gonna try it out now how it feels because I just wanna have the best FPS and this guide is probably not for like the most insane graphics because if you play with the most insane graphics right now, you're gonna get like 20 FPS. So you don't wanna have that of course. So yeah. I, th I guess that's it for the video. Uh, I hope you're gonna get some more frames out of this video now and uh, I hope you can enjoy the game more and we will get like a better version of the game with the day one patch and the upcoming patches after that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if it helped you I would appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe a subscription from you uh, since I'm gonna do more of these guides and more videos on Battlefield 2042 in the future. So thanks for watching and See you in the next one.